So what we have learned in relationships with places like Kulturum in Sweden, like Cincinnati Children's in the U.S., like Kaiser Permanente in the U.S., and others, is that leaders need to pay attention to purpose initially and their, their mission. Underneath that, of course, is how they get to their mission, and there's many ways of, uh, of doing that. The QI infrastructure in those places has been particularly strong at accelerating the pace and scale of improvement uh, for the organizations in the service of the customers. In the case of a county in Sweden, is a local population. In the case of a hospital in Cincinnati, is the children from that area and from throughout the world that travel in. In the case of Kaiser, is about 10 million people that they that they serve. But it's having the both the aims of what they're trying to do and the purpose and a method to do it and not being comfortable with having this be a, a project property. They're happy with it being a system property, and that takes some time to build that infrastructure. But w without it, uh, it, it tends to be related to specifically a project and not a system property. So the tips for senior leaders and policymakers, uh, there are many. I would summarize three. The very first one is that this is non-delegable. This is not something that's the function of the quality lead for the institution or for the system. This is something that a senior leader needs to live on a daily basis. The second one is around data and how we use data. Do we, how we look at data in a dynamic way as opposed to a static way, and how we use data uh, either for judgment, which is a way of doing it, for research, which is another way, or for improvement, which is a way that's predicated when we think about quality improvement and an infrastructure. And the third is to consider some of the leadership behaviors that we describe in, in, in a white paper around high impact leadership, uh, being per person-centered, in word indeed, uh, engaging uh, frontline staff and being present uh, on the field as it's described. And the third one out of the, the five leadership behaviors is around transparency, being very transparent uh, around data, being very transparent about behavior and being very transparent about expectations uh, for the organization around quality improvement and making that the standard that they live by. So Scotland is in a, in a privileged position, I think. They've had a long history of uh, working around improvement in the service of their population. Over the last few years, through the Scottish Patient Safety Programme, they've also built an infrastructure that they're now using uh, for, uh, for other purposes. And that's happening throughout Scotland. So over the last year and a half or so, in doing these uh, uh, conversations and critical friend reviews with all of the health boards throughout Scotland, we've learned uh, a bit more about where they are and uh, where they're going. I think Scotland's in a really, really strong position to leverage their assets and, and to use that assets-based uh, mentality in terms of the capability that has been built to continue to drive uh, their ambition uh, which is to make Scotland a, a global leader on, on improvement and, of course, on the outcomes in the service of their population.